Hey, this is Mike from Junkie on Crafts and Builds, and this is my impressions video of the Valiverse Legend of the White Dragon 2-pack. Now, this is the first IP that Valiverse has done outside of Action Force, and it's really cool that we can see this type of variety in Bobby Valla's portfolio of work. I have to thank my friend Marco for gifting me this set. It wasn't something that was really on my radar to grab initially. I'm not the biggest fan of uh, Power Rangers. I was kind of aged out at that point and focusing more on school, girls, life, whatever you want to call it. I understand the importance and the emotion from the fans in regards to this set and the actor Jason David Frank who left this world a much too young. This was his last film that he was in. So this is the protagonist, which is Jason David Frank, and the antagonist, Aaron Slorskin, the director, main star, and kind of like the head of the Bat in the Sun production company. I'll put his name in, in below. But here's the packaging of the two pack, uh, giving it Valiverse Legend of the White Dragon across the bottom here. Really nice open window showing the figures and all the accessories that come with them, including the alternate heads. We have this really cool image of the White Dragon and the antagonist, um, Dragon Prime, here on the back or on the side. Here is the back showing pretty much photos of both the figures and a small bio down here at the bottom that if you want to read it, you are more than welcome to pause and read. So since the box wants to come open, and let's get these figures out of the packaging. And here are the figures out of the packaging, and as you can tell, they're kind of mirror figures of each other. They both kind of have this exact same sculpt. We just had different paint decos across the two, and they both come with the same amount of accessories, which include both figures come with their own specific figure stand because it is Valiverse, and why wouldn't it come with a figure stand? Now they're both like a translucent plastic here, obviously blue for the White Dragon, red for the Dragon Prime. Let's take a closer look at the White Dragon one here. Uh, like I said, translucent plastic Legend of the White Dragon embossed inside with a bunch of cracks and a dragon head here on the side, similar to his helmet. We have one, two, three, four, five, six foot pegs. Like I said, it's just kind of like this simple, you know, a little simplified foot stand for them. Dragon Prime is the exact same thing, only it is in a red translucent plastic. Both of them come with a, two alternate pairs of hands. The first pair is this kind of karate chop, straight palmed hand. Um, again, both of them have the same little deco of silver across the knuckles here. And they both are on vertical hinges. So nice enough. They got a really nice texture here on the inside of them and the outside to kind of match the, uh, the uniform. Additionally, they come with these more emotive hands. Again, great sculpt work on the hands and the silver accent on the knuckles. Inside, you can really see the detail of the sculpt. And both sets of hands for both figures are on horizontal hinges. Both figures also come with a weapon accessory, which is this laser blade that comes out of their right forearm. So using the White Dragon, we can really get a nice look at the detail of this weapon here, which is again, it's all one piece of translucent blue plastic and red plastic for Dragon Prime, and just in a really nice job with the deco and the paint around here. 
Um, I don't know if you can tell, but like there's a little hint of blue towards the base of the uh, blade here that's painted on just really, really well. The blade itself is fairly firm. No gumminess out of the box with this. It's just a, a really cool looking uh, laser blade. Ta. And when you do not want to have their weapons engaged, they also have a, another forearm accessory that does not have the blade attached that you can put on their forearms for a more casual or other action-oriented pose that you want to put your figures in. Another accessory that is on the figure from the start is this ornate shoulder pauldron cover shield, whatever you want to call it, that comes with both figures. And it's made of a softer pliable plastic. Um, each of them have a deco of like this white diamond here painted on. Overall, the sculpt work on this is really well done. The nice hammered metal finish with this uh, kind of semi, semi gloss gold. It does have a peg inside that will fit on the back of the hero or villain. The final accessory is an alternate head for either figure. And to me, this is kind of like the, one of the real big cool points of this set. Not only do we have a really well-articulated, well-built figure with a lot of accessories, but we get these alternate heads. So we're going to start here with Dragon Prime. And here is the alternate head in the likeness of the director and Aaron names below. Um, but this is a really awesome looking head sculpt. To me, looking at after watching the trailer, this guy does look really close to the actor's likeness. Yeah, like I said, this is a, a really good sculpt. Uh, you can see the hair kind of bends down the back here. So let's go ahead and put it on. And yeah, man, I mean, so just a really, really good looking head. Articulation, you can go up that far, down that far with his hair. So yeah, uh, this guy looks very much like a villain. So let's go ahead and look at Jason David Frank's figure. And with the white dragon, again, this first helmeted head looks really well done. We've got a really nice uh, yellowish gold here across the visor and the dragon eyes. We still have the same white emblem diamond here color that matches his armor piece. But here is the alternate head of Jason David Frank. And the likeness, I know some people say it's not really looking like him. I disagree completely watching the trailer. I think this is a really spot on sculpt of Jason David Frank. We have uh, this number tattooed in on the side of his head. I'm not sure what that's for. Uh, we have this really nice fade going along from uh, the bottom of the scalp up to the top. We have an earring in here. And I don't know if you can tell here, but we have a little bit of like a gray dry brush across the beard. So let's get uh, this alternate head on the body. And there's the alternate head on the body. Again, I'll say this until whenever but this is the selling point i think for this set is for collectors to have this highly detailed alternate head of a fan favorite character from the mighty morphin power rangers there's nothing really much more to say this head looks amazing on the figure so let's go ahead and look at the aesthetics of both these figures so going into the aesthetics we'll start with the white dragon here and again it's just a really beautifully sculpted figure um the helmet here has like a pearlescent silver paint job with this, like I said, this kind of yellowish, dark yellow mustardy color for the eyes and the visor. <clears throat> Again, we have this really nice defining line work around the paint scheme here. And again, the back of the helmet here, the sculpt is just really nice. You know, going around, we already talked about the armor piece and the hammered look of the metal and the paint on the crystal, whatever it's called. Moving down to the body here, I mean, again, the sculpt work and this like honeycombed shape here looks really nice on the body. We have these armor plated sides here and like these shapes that kind of help define the uh, musculature of the waist. We have these nice goldish armor pieces on the shoulders that are painted on top of the shoulder, but it doesn't get in the way of anything. Uh, we already talked about the forearm colors here. Again, the detail of the gold and the silver, the fists and all the other hands. Again, have that nice accent of silver on the hands at the knuckles. Again, that design continues on down through the legs of the sculpt. 
and down to his silver boots. And bringing in Dragon Prime. Uh, again, it's the same body, just a different deco, but this uh, darker silver kind of gunmetal look on the armor pieces and the, and the trim look really nice. Uh, he's got a reddish crimson uh, paint job for his crystal. So good and evil laid out here in colors and aesthetics. But what about articulation? Let's go through that next using Dragon Prime. And moving on to articulation, you're going to see a lot of the same type of engineering here on these figures. So let's go ahead and start with the top. And again, I put the uh, dragon heads or the mast heads back on to kind of show the best way of range with these heads. So we are on the neck peg that we are used to seeing on Valorverse figures. And that allows you to get the head up that far, down that far. Do a 360 if you take the shield off, but if not, it's going to run into uh, these raised pieces. Moving on to the shoulders, you can get you can get 90 degrees. As you can see, it's glued here at the bottom of the shoulder. Sorry, glued here at the bottom of the shoulder. So it does raise up over the shoulder uh, upper torso piece here to allow you to get the 90. Um, do I want to do that all the time? Probably not because I don't want to loosen up that paint, but just to show you that it can be achieved. Right, you can do a 360. You got to kind of go out to get around the uh, shield there, but that's all right. You have a bicep rotation that again, I was saying earlier, it was on the shoulder. It's actually on the upper part of the arm here. So we have our usual suspect of a double jointed pinless elbow, well past 90 degrees. This forearm piece doesn't come off. So, but the hands and the wrist do rotate 180. And the fists are on a vertical or a horizontal hinge. For the body itself, we have this double ball, ball peg system here. And this is going to be where I have a bit of an issue with these figures as a whole. And I think it really comes down to the sculpt. So again, the engineering for the upper ball peg, you can kind of go back a little bit, forward a little bit. In conjunction with the lower ball peg, you can bend forward that far and bend back that far. But the issue I have here is at the waist rotation, the way the sculpt is done, and it's probably just because of how the suit is for the movie, you have this big gap here for the ball peg. Um, and that kind of really breaks up the look of this um, going into the lower torso. Again, with action force figures, we usually have like a, a sculpted belt or some sort of waist pants that kind of hides this pivot point. But on these guys, there's really nothing there. This is kind of like a one piece. So that is kind of just one of the things we have to deal with with this set. Lower legs, we can get nearly to full split on drop down hips. And with that, you can get up that far, back that far. We have our usual suspect of a thigh swivel on both legs, tolerance very well. And we have double jointed pinless knees. We have an upper boot shin torso or twist here. And then for the feet and the ankles, we have one click down, one click up, and then our pivot. So standard articulation range for an action force figure, which means you can get into a lot of poses with this guy. Let's go ahead and get to our final impressions. Final impressions of the Valiverse Legends of the White Dragon 2-pack. It's really cool that we we see Valiverse expanding on their IP properties. And I'm hoping that, you know, this, when this movie comes out, that it will be successful, even in light of Jason David Frank's passing. You know, when this comes out, we hope that it will be a fun movie to watch, especially for Jason's last performance and give him his laurels and dues. And this two pack is a very good way to pay respect and homage to the, to the movie with the usual amount of articulation that we come to expect from Valiverse and the amazing head sculpts of both the actors likenesses are definitely spot on. Uh, accessory wise, we have an adequate amount of hand options. The weapon that comes with each character in the movie as well as, you know, an alternate unpowered 
gauntlet, if you want to call it. I take back my hesitancy on wanting to get this. It's a little pricey at 60 bucks, especially if you are not a fan of the Power Rangers, uh, especially if you're looking strictly at the alternate head sculpts. I highly recommend if you are a fan of the Power Rangers, of Jason David Frank as the actor, or a fan of the Valiverse Action Force line in and of itself because these heads are compatible. But I do say give it a shot if you can. Uh, you won't be disappointed. The articulation in and of itself, like I said, is really great. And you can also, you know, add it to your Lightning Collection since that's going on discount with Hasbro before it goes over to Playmates. These figures are fun to play with. I am happy to have them in my collection and uh, hopefully you'll take that opportunity to add them to yours. So that's kind of everything I have to say about this set. I'm happy. Hopefully you're happy if you have them. And if you haven't got them, gotten them yet, maybe give them a try here on one of the many sales or conventions that Valiverse is going to be at. Or get them from your other e-retailers like Big Bad Toy Store, Nerd, Zoic, and Hella Dope Toys. Thank you guys for watching as always. Again, like, share, comment. I read it. every comment that you guys put on there. I really appreciate the feedback. And if I've earned your subscription for watching. Until next time, everyone. Thank you so much.